welcome everyone uh, at my nine month progress report and uh, let me introduce you my PhD topic changes of the mental health through pediatric cancer experience. My name is Marton Sabados. I'm a PhD student and a third year pediatric resident at the Pediatric Center Semmelweis University. My supervisor is Miklós Garami, my SMS is Mark Hernátfői, and Sylvia Kisdala and Gergely Agócs are the statisticians helping me. Uh, I love to imagine and I really hope that in the near future childhood cancer patients and survivors will live a rich and full life. And um, I'd like to establish a well-designed follow-up system focusing on the quality of life and the psychological well-being of these patients to uh, reach that vision and mission. So these are the two ongoing projects to help to reach that. The first one is a meta-analysis with the title Impact of the Tumor Location on Developing Effective Disorders Among Childhood Brain Cancer Survivors. And you may ask why uh, is this topic? Uh, pediatric can uh, brain cancer survivals have uh, still an unacceptably high chance to develop effective disorders. Sometimes they are like flattened effects, but sometimes show themselves as really severe uh, diseases like major depression. We also know that uh, different areas of the brain are responsible for uh, various functions. And a lesion, for example a tumor in a specific area, might cause uh, function loss and even lead to uh, development of some psychiatric diseases. Growing in the deficit means as the children and the person gets older, all the diseases grow into them also. So, for example, major depression gets more severe uh, by time. Therefore, is a long-term uh, follow-up for these uh, children uh, highly recommended from a young age because with the right time diagnosis and the treatment uh, leads to a decrease in the recurrence and the long-term outcomes of these disorders. So my aim was to identify which of these uh, psychiatric diseases have the highest prevalence among the different brain tumor locations. And that led me to the question, does the location of the tumor predict the occurrence and the types of affective disorders in CN uh, patients with CNS tumors? And I hypothesized that there is an association between them. Here you can see my uh, search key. The search was conducted in the 22nd of November uh, last year. After the selection process, uh, 42 uh, articles were eligible to conduct my meta-analysis. Let me show you my results. Uh, the first one is the prevalence of depression among childhood brain cancer survivors. Uh, we divided the patients in two subgroups based on the anatomical separation of the brain, infratentorial and supratentorial. The events are the diagnosed major depression uh, done by psychiatrists and professionals. Um, as you can see, uh, that there was no uh, not a meaningful difference between the two subgroups, uh, but the total prevalence is 22%, which is a really concerning number. Uh, that means that one in five uh, brain cancer survival suffers from major depression. In this slide, you can see the prevalence of uh, anxiety among these patients uh, with the same subgroups, and the events mean the diagnosed uh, patients uh, uh, as on the previous slide also, here again you can see a high level of heterogeneity, uh, which has mainly two uh, big reasons behind it. Uh, one can be the subjective part of the diagnosis, and the other is that the uh, studies used really different follow-up times. As a result, uh, you can see that infratentorial uh, patients have a slightly higher percentage of anxiety, the result is uh, not mathematically significant, but can give us a direction uh, to see if they have a uh, slightly higher chance to uh, develop anxiety. In this slide, you can see the scores these patients uh, achieved on different depression and anxiety questionnaires. All these questionnaires you can see below are self-reported questionnaires. 
and the outcome measure was the may, uh, uh, mean scores of these uh, questionnaires. Uh, we put them on a scale from 0 to 100 and we, can, we could put the different questionnaires on a linear, linear scale based on discussion with uh, some uh, experts and also we found some articles displaying that this comparison is possible. As a result, uh, in both depression and anxiety uh, sites, uh, there was a statistical uh, a significant difference between the infratentorial and supratentorial group. Infratentorial patients achieved uh, higher scores and achieved worse on these uh, assessment tools. So, for a strength, I'd like to highlight uh, as we also, for, for us clinicians, is re what is really useful, that uh, conducting the search, doing the analysis, uh, it pointed out many missing informations, the stud different studies used uh, for more precise uh, follow-up for the uh, survivals. And as a limitation, um, the lack of data about the follow-up times was uh, our main uh, limitation. We wanted to um, uh, conclude uh, and have some clear conclusions how much of an impact the follow-up times uh, have uh, on developing these disorders, but there was uh, not enough data to do so. As a conclusion, uh, I can say that brain cancer survivals have really much more emotional impairments compared to the healthy population and uh, infratentorial brain tumor uh, survivals have a slightly higher chance to develop anxiety disorders and score worse in both depression and anxiety assessment tools. We can use this information and in the future put a closer uh, psychological follow-up for these patients, maybe put a more focus on the infratentorial operations. And for further research, uh, I'd like to recommend to uh, do many and really a lot of prospective cohort studies uh, for the more precise analysis. If cross-sectional uh, studies uh, are conducted in the video patient data is crucial, for example, for the follow-up times, and universal and harmonized measurements and questionnaires for comparison will be useful. I'm happy to say that uh, yesterday uh, my manuscript uh, had been submitted in the European Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Yeah. So I'm eagerly waiting for the uh, upcomings. My second project is the Hungarian Linguistic and Cultural Adaptation of the Minneapolis Manchester Quality of Life Instrument. Um, we know that the um, there was a huge uh, improvement in the survival of this patient, so the focus has shifted more towards the quality of survival and the quality of life of them. Um, there are not so many uh, uh, quality of life questionnaires focusing on uh, cancer survivors, so with this validation I'd like to provide a questionnaire focusing on them and then to add this domain to the National Pa Pediatric Cancer Registry of Hungary, use it on a regular basis, and with that to establish a better follow-up system. Here you can see the design of the questionnaire. It's a self-report uh, instrument for the age between 13 and 18. It has seven factors and 46 items, for example, cognitive, psychological, functioning, outlook on life. So I'm uh, ready with the linguistic adaptation and we got the ethical permission to perform the cross-sectional uh, study, uh, which is a part of the validation. Uh, we'd like to uh, measure 100 patients that are ready with their active treatment and uh, 100 uh, children uh, for a control group. We will compare these uh, results with the already validated quality of life questionnaires. So, as a summary, these two projects uh, are moving on and are helping me to reach my mission. And I'd like to finish my presentation with uh, part of a lyric by Leonard Cohen, which is, ring the bells that still can ring, forget your perfect offering, there's a crack, a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. Thank you for your attention.
you mentioned that uh, this page needs regular psychological checkups, and uh, I wonder if you have a recommendation for that, how it should be done. Yes, thank you for uh, the question. We've been thinking about it a lot. Um, as they are, uh, so during their active treatment, as they are staying in the hospital, we will, uh, I think uh, the best will be to measure them after the big uh, milestones in their treatment, like after surgery, after uh, radiotherapy, after chemotherapy, because all the different um, tumor types have really different uh, uh, treatment schedules. So uh, in their, during their hospital stay that way. And uh, after their active treatment, uh, in all the checkup visits, which is after one month, three months, six months, one year to five years, we have a great to measure them. And uh, we are planning a, a prospective uh, study doing that uh, in our clinic, which uh, I'm really uh, waiting to start. To, so we will uh, do these uh, checkups, as I said. So yeah, these are my recommendations. There were two outliers in the second figure in the prevalence of anxiety uh, analysis. And what is the reason behind this? Yeah, you mean here? Yes. Uh, so uh, the Hirsch and the Pedreira uh, studies, it's, it's a really interesting uh, question um, because, as I said, one of the reasons behind this uh, huge heterogeneity uh, is uh, the follow -up, different follow-up times. And uh, I wish I could say that they used uh, really long or really short follow-up times, but actually Hirsch, uh, in the Hirsch study, they used like uh, really long follow-up times. This was like uh, 13 years. And uh, in the Pedreira study, it was two months after treatment. So there's, there's not much of a conclusion behind it, but maybe. So after, after, right after the treatment, it might be a shock, which can lead to this high level of uh, anxiety. And yeah, long after treatment, it's, there's much like growing into deficit, as I said. And I just have a quick question about what is MRAW? I saw that you guys use the measure of effect MRAW and uh, it's because you had different type of questionnaires, um, I assume. Just because we have used standardized mean difference and like, do you know what's the difference between them or how can we interpret this MRAW? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are uh, the raw main scores. Uh, as I said, uh, we didn't have to use standardized mean uh, differences because we could put the different mean scores of the different questionnaires on a linear scale. Um, uh, we had um, some discussions with uh, psychiatrists and also an article said that uh, as the higher scores mean uh, like uh, worse outcomes and with the same sensitivity, so, so that's it why we didn't use standardized means.